Larry, can you provide more clarity on what what mechanisms that once saved our lives are now creating our symptoms and difficulties? Yeah, and it's the very, if you remember from other webinars that uh, one of the things that all of these uh, coping mechanisms have in common is that they do the best that they can with what we've got and they all involve a certain kind of disconnection. So for example, in if the earliest kinds of trauma, it's too painful to feel with the, you know, then I'm talking about, you know, birth trauma, early attachment trauma and so on. So we disconnect uh, from our bodies and maybe we go into our heads maybe we if you're the spiritualizing subtype you actually end up living in the in the energetic field but uh, these same mechanisms of disconnection when we continue to use them create the very symptoms that we experience as adults so that's not a new idea but we're going to be developing a little bit further in the course of this uh of course of this webinar but yeah. it's coming clear to me and in, in hearing you present this information is that my strategies that i looked so down upon actually came from what my strengths were initially what my inter internal resources were initially and this this is touching me here you know as as we talk about it again yeah. this is so often i I'm angry at my strategies. <laughs> I'm kind of down on myself for my strategies, but to really think about that, um, I used whatever resources I could as a, a, a small human, right? As a small yeah. child right. and drawing on those resources, I did the best I could. I mean, that, that somehow that's touching me anew here. Oh, well, that's yeah. with a person of your experience on working on yourself and an arm and so on. It's, uh, it's it, yeah, it's nice to hear that it, you can still, we can all still begin to look at these dynamics with a, you know, through a slightly different lens because it is so easy to get frustrated at ourselves when we know in our heads, for example, that we, the, the catastrophes that we expect if we say no to somebody or set limits with, with people are, are, are not going to happen, but we still continue to have difficulty, let's say, standing up for ourselves or communicating our needs or, you know, uh, trusting people interpersonally. We, we can know all of this in our heads. And like you're saying, Sherry, it's like, and we get frustrated with ourselves when we know that what we originally what originally could have been catastrophic is no longer catastrophic and that's not enough. And just as a, a way of addressing all of these uh, coping and survival mechanisms is that actually uh, accepting them and even valuing them and appreciating them for the life-saving you know, quality that they, they brought to our lives, that actually from a clinical perspective is much more useful than trying to reject them. And this, we, we, there's a softening that happens when we really understand that even today when we're acting on some of these old survival mechanisms, that some part of us is really believing that that is a way to save our lives, literally to save our lives, because so many of these mechanisms have to do with, you know, existential issues really that are experienced by, at least by the child, whether it's reality or not, it's their reality that, uh, you know, to speak up for ourselves could be, and in some cases was actually life-threatening. Yeah. And, and how moving it is when we can, um, support our clients in seeing the wisdom of their strategies and the softening in them, right? The softening yeah. of the, the self-blame. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the things that we've all seen as clinicians is that, you know, clients come in with a tremendous amount of self-rejection, self-hatred, self-judgment. And then, you know, that, that was, as we've talked about, you know, in other places that that was a way of protecting the attachment relationship but then it gets multiplied because 
we use these coping mechanisms and then we see that they're not working when we you know or we we feel the symptoms from the the coping mechanism we feel bad about ourselves for that and so this shame and self-projection can just build uh one upon the other